Welcome back to What's Up with Jessup. We're joined with a wonderful guest, August Weinbrin. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me. So today, amidst the coronavirus, what are we talking about today? Um, that's for you to decide, Jessup. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to talk about whatever, <laughs> anything you'd like. Okay, that sounds good. Well, I am making this a very meta episode right now. I just heated up my food. So we could, we might as well talk about health, our, our nutrition. How do you keep yourself healthy slash uh, getting all the good nutrition amidst this uh, coronavirus epidemic? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. With regards to health, mm -hmm. um, I think there's like, I think there's like three angles. Okay. Um, or three facets to it. Sure. There's um, like general nutrition, uh -huh. which is how you eat. There's um, exercise. Yeah. And the third one, um, which I'd say people don't really, or at least I don't think about as much, but I think is probably um, just as important, if not more important than the other two, is sleep. Okay. Um, so let's talk about uh, general nutrition first in this episode. Oh, yeah. Um, so the way I kind of think of food or that someone like told me um, is if you can cook it at home, it's probably healthy. Mm. So if you yeah. just eat all home cooked food, you're probably eating fine. Well, that means I'm healthy. I'm like a <laughs> great person because I meal prep all my meals. Yeah. But what do you think of that? I mean, sure. I mean, there are probably ways to mess it up. <laughs> if you put too much sodium, which I used to do at the start of my meal prep career, <laughs> where like I would just spray so much salt. It's insane. <laughs> I would make it out of my <laughs> whatever food I'm making. So, but now it's good. I'll actually. I'm usually embarrassed, but I'll show you what I'm eating. Um, I'm eating a lot of, of rice here, you can see. I'm eating a lot of uh, beef slash pork. And then there's actually a lot of uh, vegetables here. Like, what is what a choke? I don't know. Um, whatever that, like, long thing is. Uh, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Broccoli and things like that. And peas and peanuts. So yeah, looks <laughs> pretty good. Thank you so much. I mean, <laughs> much better than your normal meal, if I do say so myself. Exactly. I mean, you give me a lot of a uh, flack for, I mean, putting cheese on it because that's like kind of weird. Um, and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So like, a good thing is yes. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, for me, like, I didn't really cook that much, actually, before this coronavirus outbreak. Mm -hmm. But, like, since it's happened, um, I've pretty much been cooking all my meals. Wow. Um, which, for me, is, like, a very new thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, like, you might, for whoever's listening, like, if you're wanting of things to do, um, might be a good time to, like, start working on your cooking skills i agree i mean i assume that's like great husband material <laughs> we talked about it like <laughs> before but like you know if you're looking for a girlfriend or things like that they would probably really appreciate you being able to cook i mean that's a great quality in a guy and august is a cooking man think about it <laughs> i'm sure it adds to your character um and also i mean you're gonna have to eat um, for the rest of your life. So <laughs> you might as well learn how to make food you like to eat. That is a, so true. You are making a great point. You have to eat anyways. <laughs> your entire life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what have you been cooking, August? Um, I guess, like, I've been experimenting with different spices um, mm. a lot. and Like curry? Um, Typical of UK. Well, I haven't made any curries yet, no. But like testing out 
um, different spices and seeing if I like different combinations. Um, something I really like to do is just like, um, I mean, of course I didn't make it up or anything, but like just toasting the spices in the pan before um, cooking my dish. Yeah. Um, I think it just adds a nice flavor to it. I agree. Um, I've been using a lot of fresh chili peppers to add a little bit of heat. Yeah. Um, Me too. I had like fresh uh, peppers that are not that like spicy, but like they're from Mexico. I, I don't know. It's like kind of like bell peppers. They're not bell peppers, but they're some kind of peppers. They add so much flavor. Oh, yeah. 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 What else have you been putting in your food? Well, always pretty much every meal, garlic, mm. onion. Yeah. Um, maybe like a quarter of the time I'll put in some ginger as well. Mm -hmm. um, these are great things because basically like they're pretty cheap to buy. Um, they stay fresh for a long time yeah. and they add so much flavor to every dish. Um, yeah. So I, hear I don't see why not to add it to every meal. That's true. I feel like you're breaking the mold and stereotype of British food being just fish and chips. You're uh, changing that. <laughs> um, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. Well, I couldn't make that because it would probably use up all the oil I have mm. <laughs> to make fish and chips. I see. It's just for practical purposes, you can't make fish and chips. Yeah. <laughs> but they are very good here, yeah. Mm. I recently learned that fish and chips, of, like the chips, aren't chips themselves. They're actually french fries. <laughs> we call. No? You just recently learned that? Yeah. I didn't know this. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, I'm glad you learned it. Really? Better late than never. <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought I knew it like, was something else, but I thought it was like fish and biscuits or something like that. <laughs> I didn't know it was like... Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would probably be good, too. I agree. Fish and biscuits. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be like something very British, like, like scones or something. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. So they're just, just, just fast food chips, like just French fries. Yeah. Who knew? Interesting. And then, um, yeah. Nutrition wise, to say, yeah. um, about exercise. Oh, exercise. Yes. Exercise is important, and we can probably talk about that in the next episode. <laughs> oh, okay, so we should keep this one strictly to nutrition, sure. sure. Yeah. Um, and so if you want to hear about also, that, you should tune in to the next episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I have a few more things to say about nutrition now that I think of it. Yeah, of course. But what do you think of this? Shall uh, we keep going? Yes, we should always keep going. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, I think um, with food, like, I, I'm just thinking more about, like, what I will feel sleepy after lunch when eating. It's definitely hard to, like, understand the causal relationship because it could just be that that time of day I'm feeling sleepy naturally. Mm -hmm. um, but I think eating things like honey... Yeah. Mm -hmm. um even though i really like it uh -huh. um for me like eating it af at the end of my lunch mm -hmm. like a, a peanut butter and honey sandwich for example mm -hmm. makes me sleepy later in the day yeah so we're back with pseudoscience time with jessa <laughs> i will try to explain why <laughs> that is the case so first reason why you get sleepy after you uh, eat <laughs> something, ready, is because of your digestive tract. We're back at the digestive tract. Um, the reason why is once you start having food or anything in your digestive tracts, they start moving. 
automatically. And so <laughs> all your blood goes to your digestive tracts in order to digest it. Because once you digest food, the nutrients go into your uh, blood. And you may or may not have known, but in your uh, intestines, they are lined with so many blood vessels. And so once the blood starts going from your brain <laughs> to your digestive tracts, um, you feel sleepy because you don't have as much blood pumping in your face. So that was pseudoscience with Tessa. What do you think? Um, well, I, I think that sounds... I don't know, so maybe I don't know either, but um, it mind. sounds accurate to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but the thing I've noticed is I also lose focus if I haven't eaten for a while as well. Yeah. I don't know if you, I, some people say they're more focused when they fast, but for me, the opposite is the case. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, second point of pseudoscience with Jessa <laughs> is that if your blood levels, like blood sugar levels are going down so much, I would assume that you, your motivation levels drop and you become uh, sleepier. So like, that's a good point. You can't, uh, eat too much or you can't eat at all like that those two both of them will decrease your productivity what do you think yeah yeah absolutely um it might be worth keeping track of um like if you're feeling sleepy at lunch um like how much or what foods you're eating at lunch and how sleepy you feel afterwards um because over long term, this could very much be something that you optimize within your life. Yeah, I completely agree. And another point is what kind of food you eat. I mean, you mentioned a uh, sandwich, like peanut butter and sandwich. That's high in carbohydrates and sugar. And what happens a lot with yeah. is the sugar spike when you eat those kinds of foods, um, especially if it's yeah. refined sugar, like uh, bread or um, sugar, honey, things like that, they just spike your um, blood sugar. So while you're eating it, you're like very focused. You're like, wow, <laughs> I can solve all work. <laughs> Poverty, uh, no problem. And then right after that, there's a sugar crash. Um, so when there's a peak, there's a crash. <laughs> and so it's just like you know, yeah. a crisis. You go way down and you're so sleepy because um, the best way, uh, and I've actually read a scientific article on this, where you have to increase your blood sugar level um, incrementally throughout the day in order for you to maintain um, a good concentration level. So that's why you eat a lot of proteins um, and a, li a little bit of fat because they burn actually longer and for a longer time. So if you eat a lot of protein and fat, um, they allow you to uh, burn that uh, over a longer time rather than carbohydrates that just peak and then go away. Yeah. So that was... I think I found, like, okay. <laughs> I don't think it's good to cut out all carbohydrates, so... Um, I completely agree. I mean, in my experience, like... Just in even keeping the same energy levels throughout the day, you need some good yeah. carbs. I completely agree. So it's like you have to eat complex carbohydrates like oats, like whole wheat, whole grains. They, they tend to be harder to break down and therefore they provide you with a more like sustainable uh, energy flow. While if you just yeah. snort sugar um, <laughs> or just like completely eat a bar of chocolate, that's going to be gone within like an hour or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you have like an ideal like eating schedule of food you'd eat and at what times you'd eat them sure, um, to cool. maintain this energy? Yeah. I mean, you already know. I mean, I have a lot of like a um, uh, lot of like big chunk of meat. And then I have some carbohydrates, which is rice for me, but you can do pasta if you're American, Western. <laughs> and then you have like a lot of <laughs> vegetables. And I think I was doing wrong was I had too much carbohydrates. So it's like it was 
almost two to one ratio of like meat and, and carbohydrates. But then I didn't have that much vegetables. So it was, I was having digestive problems. Wait, so you mean double the meat, uh -huh. double the meat to the carbohydrates? Yeah, yeah. I had double the amount of carbohydrates than meat. And so, okay, I think, okay. I'm trying to like make it so that it's like one to one to one. Or like one to 1.5 for carbohydrate to 0 0.5 for uh, vegetables. And I'm trying to- Veggies? Yeah, veggies. I'm trying to increase as much veggies as possible because it actually helps you feel much better. Yeah, that's what I think too. Mm -hmm. um, so why not do like um, 1.5 um, for um, carbohydrate, 1.5 for vegetables, and then one for meat? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I think that that should be a good golden ratio right there. <laughs> yeah, I guess I remember just like, I never measure these things out, so I wouldn't. And I usually cook it all together anyway, so. Yeah. So like one, one tip might be like having like containers with division, like divisors like there are even like those like containers with like um two places so like your side dish and then like your main dish area so like you could get one of those yeah and then start like dividing it up do you usually um when you meal prep do you usually keep everything like do you have like a veggies bin and uh -huh. a meat bin and a rice bin or do you put rice meat and veggies in all your bins uh, no, I, I, I have a rice bin. I have a, yeah, I keep them separate. And then even when I'm cooking them, I just cook them separately. Because, I don't know, it just looks better. Like, once I start cooking, <laughs> it looks really bad, as you've seen before. Like, so my meal. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I missed that. Uh, some of my meals look very questionable, whether they are even um, edible. So just for like appearance sake, <laughs> separating out is probably better. Well, I guess the only one who really needs to know they're edible is you. You're right. As long as your friends don't make fun of you for your meals. <laughs> Not that you I think can... you can live with it. Oh yeah. Um... <laughs> we can live with it. Yeah. Um, but this was a pleasure. Um, yeah. I really have to go to sleep, but of course. Um, Thank you for being on the podcast. We'll, we'll maybe do another one or a couple. Yeah, this is a great one. All right.